I will give you shepherds after my own heart, and they shall feed you on knowledge and sound teaching. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Peter Canisius, who uh, was one of the uh, early Jesuits. Um, he was born the year that uh, St. Ignatius uh, was injured in uh, the Battle of Pamplona that began his own conversion. And uh, Canisius uh, went on to uh, become a great teacher, preacher, and author. And I'll tell you more about him later. Uh, also uh, uh, held in high regard in my family uh, and by me because I was born and baptized in St. Peter Canisius Parish in Chicago. And so I will remember the parishioners there as well as our intention for today the repose of the soul of Bo Corson. And so as we begin our celebration, let's just take in a moment of quiet reflection, look back in our daily lives, look for those moments of grace, and give God thanks for his blessing. We recognize, too, there are times we are sinners, and so we seek forgiveness from our loving God. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, God of patience and compassion, raise up prophets and teachers like Peter Canisius to proclaim your message in the cities of the world so that people may turn to you, the living God, and to the one you have sent, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first, second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingly power. Proclaim the word. Be persistent whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Convince, reprimand, encourage, through all patience and teaching. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine, but following their own desires and infatigable curiosity, will accumulate teachers and will stop listening to the truth and will be diverted to myth. But you, be self-possessed in all circumstances, put up with hardship, Perform the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. I come to do your will. I have waited, waited for the Lord. And he stooped toward me and heard my cry. And he put a new song into my mouth. A hymn to our God. Grand Lord, I can do your will. Sacrifice and oblation you wish not, but ears open to obedience you gave me. Burnt offerings or sin offerings you sought not. Then said I, Behold, I come. To do your will. In the written scroll is prescribed for me to do your will, O oh my God, is my delight. And your law is within my heart. I, am Lord, to be your I announce your justice in the vast assembly. I do not restrain my lips as you, O oh Lord, know. I am to be your, will. your justice I kept not hid within my heart. Your faithfulness and your salvation I have spoken of. I have made no secret of your kindness and your truth. In the vast assembly, to be your will. Oh. 
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. The city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so, your light must shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. My first semester of uh, theology studies, I uh, registered for a class at the Harvard Divinity School. It uh, was across the street from where I was living. And uh, the professor, and it was actually a professor from uh, our school, the Western Jesuit School of Theology, Father John O'Malley. He was on sabbatical, and for his sabbatical, he went and taught at uh, his alma mater, Harvard, where he had done his own doctorate in church history. And so a group of us took a, a church history course uh, from him there. And uh, the course uh, covered a period that included something that uh, it included the Protestant Reformation and, and what many people refer to as the, the Counter Reformation. Uh, and John O'Malley rejected uh, that term. Father O'Malley argued uh, we didn't have a Counter Reformation, rather, we had a Catholic Reformation, meaning that the, the church itself. Uh, went through a, a great period of reform to, to correct some of the abuses that, that took there, but uh, more than the abuses, there was a change in the way things were done. Um, uh, an interesting thing, it happened 50 years before this effort started, and that was uh, a German, Johannes Gutenberg, invented a printing press that used movable type, meaning you could set up a page relatively quickly and start multiplying pages rather quickly. Um, the modern printing era had begun, and books went from being something that could cost you a year to two years of your, your income to be able to buy a single book, because it had to be either copied out by hand or each page delicately carved into a printing plate. So if you had a 500-page book, you carved 500 plates, made a mistake, you had to start over on that page. There was no erasing. Um, but books were now becoming common. And uh, as a result of that, uh, the idea of people reading became common. And this opened up all sorts of things to people, especially the scriptures. And so there was a great desire uh, to both read and hear about the word of God. This is Martin Luther's insights and uh, uh, he and John Calvin and others uh, set up uh, made preaching a, a priority in their ministry and and so uh, the Catholic reform was to to increase 
the amount of preaching that was done. And uh, that's where our friend Canisius comes into play. He was born in Holland, in the town of Nimegen, in 1521. Um, the age of 14, he went off to college uh, in Cologne. And by the time he was 20, he had graduated with a master's degree. Um, this is a bright boy. Uh, and uh, he had an interest uh, in the priesthood. And uh, he heard about a new religious order that had just started. Um, it was called, they called themselves the Society of Jesus. And uh, so he wrote a few letters and it turned out that one of the original founders, and in fact, the man who was kind of Ignatius's right hand in terms of setting up communities and things, St. Peter Faber, uh, was going to be in the neighborhood, uh, in a neighboring city. And so he traveled there, met with him, and Faber thought this man was earnest and intelligent and might indeed have a vocation. So he invited him to make the 30-day retreat to the spiritual exercises with him. And in that retreat, in the second week, uh, the week of election, he made an election to join the society, and so he was welcomed into it at the age of 22. Um, uh, he went, first went back uh, to the university and finished his doctorate, and then headed to Rome, uh, where he was almost immediately uh, sent uh, to Messina in Sicily, where the, the Duke of Messina had invited the Jesuits to open a college, our first college. And so he was part of the faculty there. He taught there for almost two years when the Holy Father, Paul III, exercised this uh, vow that uh, Ignatius had promised to him that each of our professed members would take of special obedience to him. And he called him back to Rome and said, I want you to go and convert Germany uh, back to Catholicism, to make an inroads into what uh, Luther and, and Calvin and others were, were doing. And so he and a few companions went to, went to, to Germany, um, went to Ingolstadt is where they started. And the first thing that he did there was found another college, started a college there and started visiting parishes. And what he found was that the people who were Catholic in Ingolstadt were kind of Catholic in memory only. It had been a long time since most of them had darkened the door of the church. Um, uh, and so he, he decided what they needed to do was to hear about these things. So uh, when he wasn't teaching, he would be in the pulpit of their church preaching or out in the street preaching. And eventually uh, people started coming to hear him. And the numbers started growing in, in their own parish and in the other parishes as, as he got others to, to join in this. And uh, uh, it, it started to make an inroads back, bringing the Catholic faith back uh, to the forefront there. Uh, the Holy Father was so pleased at this that he grabbed him from Ingolstadt and sent him to Vienna, the capital of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And there he, he started out, founded a college, uh, founded a parish, started preaching there, and uh, became the, uh, the preacher to the court of the, the Holy Roman Emperor, the, uh, the Austro-Hungarian emperor, and uh, uh, started gaining renown as that. And he also started writing. Uh, he decided, you know, the reason people weren't coming is because they didn't know about things. And they needed basic instruction in the faith. So he wrote a book. It was called The Summary of Christian Doctrine uh, in, in its long form. Uh, it was designed, it was a catechism written for college students. Uh, he published it in Latin in 1555. 1556 was translated in German into German, and it became the biggest selling book in Germany. There was a, a real hunger to hear about this doctrine. Um, it was so popular, he, he wrote a shorter version of it, uh, which he cleverly named Shorter Catechism. And it was uh, directed at what we would call a high school student, those in gymnasium in Germany. And then he wrote a book for elementary school children, uh, even shorter than the other one. He called that just catechism. Um, during his lifetime, those went into 200 printings at the, uh, at, at, at the printing presses, uh, which is um, the only thing that outsold it was the Bible. 
Um, uh, and it continued in print until 1900. And his name became synonymous with this idea of uh, catechism, preaching the Christian faith, so much so that to this day, if you talk to a German and ask if they, if they went to a Catholic school, they say, ah, yeah, 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 I studied my Canisius there. But uh, his name became synonymous with catechism. And to a, a German speaker, they even said that it, it was, uh, that was what a catechism was called, was Canisius, the author of it. Um, he worked uh, diligently uh, traveling around from city to city as the Holy Father and our Father John, Father's General would send him around uh, until he suffered a stroke in 1591, which confined him to home, but he continued writing. Um, but uh, six years later, finally, he succumbed to, to old age and his infirmer, infirmities and, and passed away. Uh, at the point he had died, he had founded, founded 18 colleges, published 37 books, including the number one bestseller, uh, the cat, his catechism uh, through Germany, um, uh, and had been uh, influential in bringing, restoring the Catholic faith in what we, we uh, several areas of Germany, uh, Schwabia and, and Munich and such, um, Austria, Hungary, what's today the Czech and Slovak republics, um, that whole area is where, where he traveled through. Um, and in doing so, he did exactly what Paul was telling Timothy to do in his leader. Um, be self-possessed, put up your hardship and perform the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. And that's what he did. He was sent by uh, his superiors and by the Holy Father to, to preach the gospel. And uh, that is what he did. Uh, and, and as, uh, as St. Matthew said, uh, as Jesus says in St. Matthew today, whoever obeys and teaches these commandments, teaching the commandments is the basic, the basic heart of the catechism. They will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Uh, Canisius may have been the greatest catechist, but the mission given to him is the same mission given to each and every one of us in our baptisms and renewed every year as we celebrate Christ's passion and resurrection. Uh, to go forth and proclaim the good news, be catechist, and let everyone hear this good news. Let us gather our prayers and bring them before our loving God. For God's people, bringing others to faith by their work, words and deeds, we pray to the Lord. For deacons standing as great signs of justice and service to the church, we pray to the Lord. For those who bear false witness, called to submit to the truth, we pray to the Lord. For those persecuted for the name of Jesus, relying on the strength of God's Spirit, we pray to the Lord. For the sick in need of the strength that inspired St. Stephen, for Father Norm Dixon, Father Pablo, Father Mark, Connor, Peggy, Madeline, Dorothy, Raymond, Zachariah, Lewis, Casey, Stephen, and all those sick in our parish and those suffering from the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. For all the dead invited to the blessed company of the saints, especially both Kershaw and we pray to the Lord. For all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all those spoken and unspoken, and those in the book of intentions, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come before you bringing your hopes and desires. These few we've given voice, others held silently in our hearts. But all of them offer to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. And Lord, accept the sacrifice of our sin, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Lord, receive the gifts we bring in memory of St. Peter. Open our lips to give you thanks and to praise your holy name. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and never pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers of the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the high. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Martin, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her husband, your blessed apostles, Wenceslas and the martyrs, Peter, Canisius, Martin, and all of the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command informed by divine teaching, let us pray together the prayer given to us by Jesus himself. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, the only who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am Lord. not worthy that you, you should be drunk from my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Most gladly will I spend all and be utterly spent for you. Let us pray. God of our ancestors, through the mouth of St. Peter Canisius, you spoke to your scattered flock. Grant that those who believe in your son may remain true to his teaching and be one in the breaking of the bread. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.